And this is the first of the bit more difficult parts which we are going to model. And uh, well, we'll use a revolve, but we need to make an undercut and also pathway for keys. That could be a bit difficult. It's all shown in the film, however. And if you enjoyed these films, please do spread them. This part is a bit trickier than the ones we've done before. And once again, we're looking at an axis and this, this needs to be revolved. So we'll start with making a sketch. We'll put it on the front plane. And this time I will make a center line, which is horizontal. And then I will draw the general outline. I will start with the Rigo at the way back. I'll head up like this. And then I have an angle heading down like this. And finally, that's the end. So this is the general outline. And now I could simply start adding dimensions and angles. And I will start with the angle. This should be 5 degrees. The entire length should be 72. Now this looks a bit messed up, but is it a problem? No, it isn't. We can just drag it along until it looks nice once again. And this distance should be 20. Now it looks a bit less peculiar. And I will pick this line and this line. I will add the dimension 42. And now I should get started with the diameters. This one should be 10. And this one should be 35. And note that I'm not adding any kind of tolerances this time. I will do this later afterwards in my drawing. And here I will just pick the nominal values. Well, that's it. We have a fully defined sketch, so we'll exit this one. We'll make a revolve boss base. Yeah, we do wish to close it. Okay. There are, however, a couple of snags. This is not entirely complete, is it? We start off by creating the key. This is needed since we want this part to rotate along with the, with the hub. What do you call it? No, it's a... Uh, it isn't a sprocket wheel. Ah, anyhow, uh, the thing that you, you utilize your hand to turn the entire mechanism. We'll put that in a new plane. We'll put this tanger to this one. And we'll utilize the front plane. And we'll say it needs to be parallel. Great. I will make a sketch upon this new plane. Now now I will make a slot. A stretch lot. And that's it. This one needs to be horizontal to Rigo, or coincident in this time part. And now we could add the values, and, then, and it's 14. Either we could calculate this, or we make it like this. We press both of the arcs. We'll just pick any value. Then we'll head into leaders. And on arc conditions, we will not no longer have center. We will have max, max. And thus, we get the maximum value. And this should be 14. Great. And the diameter should be 4. Okay. And the distance from the end should be 5 millimeters. Great. There we have our keyway. And we'll make an extruded cut. And it should be 2.3 millimeters deep. And this, of course, needs to be milled afterwards, after we put this entire thing to the lathe. Okay. And here comes another tricky part. Perhaps the most tricky part we could find upon this one. And as you can see, this part, it needs to go on a lathe. Well, there's a problem. We can't really make sh sharp corners on a lathe. And we shouldn't. It will create enormous stress within the sharp corner as well. So we wish to make what you call an undercut. And this is defined in Dean 509. I will make this one. We'll start with the front plane and we'll make a sketch. And here we can see we could just make the general outline. We'll start with this one. It's heading down like this. 
And here we could just close it off. And this time I will just add the general dimensions and afterwards I will do the fillets afterwards. So that we get round nice edges. And this distance it needs to be 0 0.2 millimeters. And this one needs to be 0 0.2 as well. And I will add the angles. This should be 15 degrees. And this one could also be 15 degrees. What else do we need? This should be 0 0.95. Oh no, that's great, isn't it? But there is a slight problem. As you can see, we don't have a measurement for this one. It's not in the drawing. It's not good enough. But it doesn't really matter at this time. We'll just pick a value. But in case you're the machinist, and this seems to cru be crucial for the part, you need to make a call to the engineer who's been making the drawing to figure out what's been going on and what could we do to change it. But at this time, we'll just pick a value. And this time, I think we'll pick one millimeter. Ah, oh, this is a bit, bit too, uh, 1.5 perhaps. Oh, great. And we'll head out. And in features, we'll make a revolved cut. And this time, we don't have an axis of revolution. We could either pick one, we could just try to hide show, go into the temporary axis and pick the temporary axis as the axis. Whatever you like. And then we close it off. That's great. And now we need to add the fillets. 0 0.2 millimeters. This one, this one, and finally this one. And now we have a complete undercut. However, we are not finished with the fillets. So we'll make need to add one again once more. 1.5 millimeters. And we should add some chamfers as well. And they are heading out all the way up. Let's see, could we find them? 1 times 45 millimeters, two of them, one of each on each side. And finally, we need a chamfer down here. This one should be, let's look, have a look, 1.5. And 15 degrees. This looks great. And we need this in order to mount, to facilitate easier mounting. But we forgot something. What did we forget? Yeah, you know, we forgot uh, the threads. This is a problem, not really. But if we start to add it down here, we are messing up our own doctrine how to model parts. So I will draw this line all the way up here. And here I will start adding my hole wizard. We need to have one over here. Let's go straight in the middle. And this one should be M5. A thread. M5. Now let's have a look. It should be 12 and 16. And that's what you get as a general thing as well. With the thread call out, that's great. And we wish to have the same thing on the other side. However, I don't, will not make a mirror since this could make my construction a less, more less flexible in case I wanted to switch whatever I had on these sides. And once again, M5 and these. And I will... Well, that's great. It's just what we want. Okay. And if we drag it downwards, we can see there is no change in my model whatsoever. And I will make a small chamfer. This should be 0 0.9. And there we go. So that's the model. Now we have to pick the material. Right click, edit, and this goes on a lathe. So we'll most probably use a free cutting material. 
and that's exactly what we do. We we'll pick this one, apply, and finally we'll head into the properties. File, properties, description should be Axel. The material should be connected. The weight should also be connected. And we'll make a space and a G for grams afterwards. And lastly, finish. And this thing will be called in alias. It will need to be lubricated after manufacturing. Well, that's it.